between approximately 9 a.m. and noon on a Friday, a pivotal moment unfolded as Jesus Christ, one of the most renowned figures in history, was crucified on a cross. The Jewish leaders sought to ensure that Jesus would be taken down from the cross before 6 p.m., marking the commencement of the Sabbath. Their preference was for him to be deceased and removed prior to the onset of the Sabbath. Following this, Pontius Pilate issued an order to break the legs of those crucified to hasten their deaths. And in the case of Jesus, the soldier tasked with executing the order opted against breaking his legs. Instead, he chose to pierce Jesus' side with a spear. It was evident that Jesus had already passed away. The soldier employed a spear to verify Jesus' death and promptly, both blood and water streamed forth from his side. This soldier's action held great significance as it aligned with a prophecy found in Psalm chapter 34, verse 20. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. The sacred spear has evolved into one of Christianity's most esteemed relics, sparking debates and controversies akin to those surrounding the true cross and the Shroud of Turin. However, Christian canonical texts provide no additional reference to the lance wielded by the Roman soldier, consequently shrouding its destiny in uncertainty. We're only able to get additional information about it alongside its owner from the apocryphal text known as the Gospel of Nicodemus, believed to have been written in the 4th or 5th century. According to this narrative, the soldier who brandished the spear was a Roman centurion named Longinus. In specific Christian beliefs, it is argued that Longinus was the centurion mentioned in the Gospel of Mark. This centurion, upon witnessing Jesus' death, is said to have exclaimed, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Truly, this man was the Son of God. According to certain narratives, Longinus was depicted as either blind or suffering from a condition like ophthalmia. It is said that his affliction was miraculously healed when his eyes touched the blood from the wound he had caused on Jesus' side. As a result, the spear gained the esteemed status of the Holy Lance, and Longinus experienced a significant transformation. He abandoned his military career, embraced Christianity, and eventually met martyrdom. He is commemorated as Saint Longinus, with a designated feast day celebrated on October 16th. Given that the spear came into contact with the body of a living God, it is unsurprising that people attributed supernatural qualities to it. Indeed, according to legends, ownership of the Holy Lance was believed to bestow upon the possessor the power to conquer the world. While it may seem like a plot from a movie, noteworthy historical figures like Charlemagne and Frederick Barbarossa were thought to experience a string of victories when in possession of the lance. This reputed ability to secure triumph, whether for good or ill, led to the Holy Lance being famously known as the Spear of Destiny. Many stories assert that the loss of the lance brings about death, a fate witnessed in the passing of both Charlemagne and Frederick Barbarossa, shortly after they either dropped or lost the lance. There is also belief that the mystical influence of the spear played a crucial role in shaping the ambitions of one of history's most infamous leaders, Adolf Hitler. Rumors suggest that he once owned this relic, and its talismanic power played a significant role in fueling his aspirations for global domination. Considering the profound significance of this relic in Christian beliefs, crucial questions emerge. What fate befell the Holy Lance? And is there any evidence substantiating its authenticity? Could there be individuals in positions of authority who possess the genuine spear, leveraging its extraordinary powers to their advantage? While we would like to offer straightforward answers to these questions, the truth is that history of the Holy Lance is far more intricate than we could have ever imagined. Complicating matters further, numerous countries lay claim to the sacred spear, yet the Church has discredited some of these assertions as counterfeit. However, despite prevailing skepticism, three spearheads have withstood expert scrutiny, hinting at the possibility that one of them might indeed be the authentic Spear of Destiny. Let's begin our narrative with one of the most captivating tales in the lore of the Holy Lance that centers around French pilgrim Peter Bartholomew. During the First Crusade, he asserted to have received visions from St. Andrew, revealing the Lance's whereabouts. Bartholomew recounted his visions to leaders of the Crusade, although a papal representative remained skeptical. Conversely, regiment leader Count Raymond of Toulouse chose to believe Bartholomew likely due to the dire circumstances at the time. Accounts written by a participating priest from the First Crusade revealed that Christian forces were besieged at Antioch by the massive army of Kerbaga. 
grappling with setbacks and food shortages. Bartholomew insisted that the Holy Lance was buried in the cathedral floor of Antioch. Despite initial skepticism and a day of fruitless digging, Bartholomew eventually unearthed a corroded iron rod. While the Crusades' commanders were dubious, this discovery proved the morale boost needed to overcome the siege. It served as a powerful motivation for the Crusaders, spurring them to continue the fight. Armed with Crusaders' swords, they launched a decisive attack on foot. The pivotal battle on June 28, 1098 in Antioch resulted in their ultimate victory, with the Holy Lance emerging as a significant symbol of their success. As a result, many Crusaders began to view Peter as a spiritual mentor. However, they became suspicious when the purported visions of Peter became more frequent. In a bid to substantiate his assertion of discovering the genuine Holy Lance, Peter subjected himself to a trial by fire. Two pyres were set ablaze with a narrow space in between. According to the test, if Bartholomew spoke the truth, he would emerge unharmed after passing through the flames with the lance. Regrettably, he did not succeed in this trial and suffered severe burns, ultimately leading to his demise. It is believed that at a certain point, the Holy Lance was divided into two relics, the tip and the notably larger shaft. According to some Byzantine texts, the tip was transported to Constantinople and incorporated into an icon. This leads us to the era of the Fourth Crusade, during which the Crusaders looted Constantinople and established their own Latin Empire. This empire endured until 1261 when Emperor Baldwin II was deposed by the Byzantines. Prior to this, Baldwin acquired the spear's tip and sold it to King Louis IX of France. The revered French monarch later canonized for his piety, enshrined the relic at the Church of Saint-Chapelle. It remained there until the French Revolution, at which point it was relocated to the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, due to societal upheaval. Regrettably, this marks the final documented whereabouts of the tip, and its present location continues to be an unresolved mystery. Luckily, the other section of the spear can be relatively well traced. In 1357, Sir John Mandeville documented seeing objects described as the blade of the Holy Lance in both Paris and Constantinople, the latter being the larger of the two. The relic in Constantinople eventually fell into the possession of the Ottoman Empire, following their conquest of the city in 1453. However, the Ottoman Turks did not retain ownership of the object for long. In 1492, Sultan Bayezid II dispatched the relic to Rome as a part of a diplomatic agreement with Pope Innocent VIII, who had the Sultan's brother in captivity. This found its present home, which is beneath the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. However, it's important to note that the Catholic Church refrains from asserting it as the genuine Holy Lance. This is partly due to conflicting claims regarding other supposed Holy Lances. According to the complexity, it remains uncertain whether the item discovered by Peter in Antioch is the same as the one currently in possession at the Vatican, or if it pertains to a different relic held in Constantinople. In the 18th century, Pope Benedict XIV declared the Antioch Lance of Peter as a forgery. Although uncertainties persist regarding whether the relic within the Catholic Church is the identical artifact, our journey to find the real Holy Lance will lead us next to Armenia. In Armenian tradition, the lance is linked to St. Thaddeus, one of the original twelve disciples of Jesus. St. Thaddeus embarked on an apostolic mission to Armenia in the first century AD, bringing the lance with him. During his time in Armenia, he played a pivotal role in introducing the Christian religion to its citizens. St. Thaddeus and his fellow apostle, St. Bartholomew, are revered as the first enlighteners of Armenia. Presumably, the lance found its residence in the monastery of Aravank during the 12th century. In 1215, as the primary church of this venerable monastery was erected, one of its chapels, as indicated by its inscription, was devoted to St. Thaddeus. This likely suggests that a relic associated with the saint, possibly the lance, was housed within. Subsequently, after 1250, the monastery garnered the name Keghardavank, with Keghard signifying lance and Vank denoting monastery. Like its counterparts, this lance was believed to possess mystical powers. For instance, the Armenian church recounts how, in 1798, the lance was loaned to the king of Georgia to aid in healing those afflicted by a plague. Notably, this holy lance differs somewhat in the shape from a typical spear, possessing a diamond-like shape with a non-sharp tip, prompting some to question its authenticity as a relic. From the early 19th century onward, and notably following the Russian occupation of eastern Armenia in 1828, 
The lance has been housed in the Museum of Holy Etchmiadzin. Our final stop to locate the authentic holy relic will bring us to Austria. It is believed that the holy lance is preserved within the Hofburg Palace in Vienna. According to legend, this holy lance is associated with Emperor Constantine, who supposedly commissioned its creation after his mother unearthed three nails believed to be relics from the crucifixion. As the legend goes, the emperor employed two nails for his crown and horse bridle, while the third was incorporated into the lance. Alternative accounts suggest that this lance may have belonged to St. Maurice, a Theban legion leader martyred for refusing to harm Christians. In either scenario, Stephen Klimchuk's secret places, hidden sanctuaries, characterizes this lance as a metal artifact with a purported crucifixion nail attached, secured by gold, silver, and copper thread. It is believed to have come into the possession of Charlemagne and subsequent Holy Roman Emperors, eventually finding its way to Nuremberg. When leadership of the Holy Roman Empire transitioned to monarchs in Austria, the relic was moved to Vienna. The story concerning the lance in Austria doesn't conclude there, but takes a captivating twist. In the 1973 bestseller book, The Spear of Destiny by Trevor Ravenscroft, a claim was made that linked the outbreak of World War II to Hitler's pursuit of this lance. The author suggested that Hitler's interest in the relic might have been sparked by his fascination with the 1882 opera Parsifal by Richard Wagner, the composer Hitler admired. The opera revolves around a group of knights guarding the Holy Grail and the recovery of the spear. Ravenscroft boldly concluded that the spear came into the possession of the United States on April 30, 1945, under the command of General George Patton, who led the Third Army. According to the legend, losing the spear meant death, and on the same day, Hitler took his own life. Patton, captivated by the ancient weapon, had its authenticity confirmed. However, he did not utilize the spear, as orders from General Dwight Eisenhower directed the return of complete Habsburg regalia, including the Spear of Longinus, to the Habsburg Palace, where it remains today. However, there are speculations suggesting that the Americans returned only a replica to Austria and retained the original weapon for themselves. This prompts the question, could the United States be concealing the Holy Spear and utilizing it to maintain ongoing global dominance? In 2003, Austrian authorities wanted to check if this relic was real. They asked British expert Robert Feather to use science to examine the 50-centimeter weapon. However, no blood or DNA was found on it. By using X-ray and fluorescent tests, they found out what the object was made of. The results showed that the spear in Vienna was made in the 7th century AD, many years after Christ died. Interestingly, Dr. Feather did confirm that the nail of our Lord the pointed iron part of the spear matched the nail from the 1st century AD. The precise whereabouts of the authentic Holy Lance remain elusive, yet its enduring legacy persists, sparking discussions on matters of faith and historical significance. The spear that pierced Jesus stands as a potent symbol, signifying redemption through the shedding of His blood, a profound act that grants us forgiveness and purification from all our sins. What are your thoughts about this? I hope you like our story. Until the next one.